Unit 8, Assessing Current Marketing Opportunities. So now we're a farmer, we're a producer, and we have a product to take to the consumer. How are we going to get it to the consumer? So I think as a small farmer, not only do you have to be an excellent farmer and grower, I think maybe just as important or maybe more important is how well you can market your product. If I have a truckload of tomatoes and nowhere for them to go, then it doesn't matter how good of quality, that doesn't make my farm very successful. So during this unit, we're going to talk about some marketing opportunities. We're going to define some markets that uh, are out there and that you can work in, on developing. And then we're going to look at some case studies and, and what are some options for each of these, each of the people. So some questions. What am I going to do to answer each of these questions? And that's what, as we tied, I've talked a lot about self-evaluation and what you're going to do. Um, but here's are some of the some of the opportunities. Am I willing to team up with another farmer? Do I want people on my farm? How far am I willing to drive? So some of the things we're going to continue to talk about. In this unit. Now for some terms. What is a market? Well, my definition of market is a location that brings buyers and sellers together. So my next question would be is Walmart a market? Because they definitely have the buyers there but are the sellers there? And yes Walmart is indirectly representing the seller in each of those items but the small farm is going to work a lot better if the buyer knows who the farmer is and I think that's part of our goal and part of the missing ingredient in that marketing chain so let's talk about some terms some wholesale uh, selling your um, product in large quantities to a few a few buyers that are, are going to resell that to customers. So they're going to buy your product, mark the price up, and sell it to a lot of different customers. Retail, typically you're selling right to the customer. The producer is selling to the customer, and because of that, you're going to receive a higher price than wholesale. So wholesale, lower price, larger volume, and a retail, a higher price, smaller volume. And then some business types. A U-Pick. I can still remember going with my grandparents to the strawberry farm in Mount Rose, Iowa. And we'd take a bunch of tubs and we'd go out and we'd pick strawberries. And we would weigh them and we'd pay for our strawberries based on weight. So people's going to come to your farm and they're going to pick the product. That's appealing to me. Picking is probably my least favorite uh, job in the garden. And so... I am very happy to let people come out and pick uh, some of the product. My favorite model for a small farm is a CSA, Community Supported Agriculture. That is where your customer buys a subscription at the beginning of the year for a case or a basket or a box of food to be delivered or picked up on the farm once a week. And this is a nice um, system that spreads the risk between the consumer and the producer and also allows to get uh, some capital at the beginning of the season for the farmer. The food hub, a centralized location where farmers can bring their produce and people can come in and, and buy from several different farmers in one location. So the food hub is kind of representing the seller and providing a place for the buyer to come to market. The demand for local grown foods, we've hit this same uh, subject uh, the whole time during class. Uh, the fastest growing bit segment of the grocery industry, there is a demand for local grown food. And it's growing. And the groceries understand that. And I think there's a potential market there for you as well. The consumer is not feeling that our food supply is safe. 
and I think we're starting to understand that we need to get back to a seasonal diet. We shouldn't be eating watermelons in February because watermelons typically are ripe in the late summer. And if we're eating watermelon in February, it's shipped from a long ways away and the quality is not as good as we would like. So, some questions you have to answer to determine where you're going to market. First one is how far am I willing to travel? I'm located in central Illinois about three hours from Chicago. Am I willing to travel to Chicago? That's a, that's a question that I have to decide. And at this point I think that's outside of what I want to call local. Second question, what are you going to grow? What products? Do you want to have 50 products at the farmer's market? Do you want to have a lot of five products at the farmer's market? You know, how many products do you want to take to the market? And then do I want to be certified organic? You can receive a premium for being organic, but is it worth all the paperwork and the hassle that you have to go through? And what are some businesses in my area that might be interested? Are there local restaurants, grocery stores that might be willing to buy my product? And the rules from the health department. I think you have to understand that there are rules that have to be followed. And we, you must be aware of those. And I think GAP, Good Agricultural Practices, is some good training to help you deal with some of those safety issues when it comes to food safety. So case study number one. Here's some facts about a farm. The location and what they're growing and what are some of the capital they have available. And so what are their options for marketing? And I think I think just take a couple seconds here and and uh, pause the PowerPoint and just think about what some of their options are. Then when you're ready you can proceed to the next slide which has some 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 answers to that question obviously uh, the farmers market is a good opportunity for them in the large area a large urban area they always have the local and regional grocery stores like Whole Foods there's probably some restaurants buying local produce and living in that location there's just a lot more opportunities for that farmer than somebody that lives far away from a from an urban urban area. So, so hopefully you had some of those ideas when you pause the slideshow. Now let's look at case study number two. Now we have a small farm that currently has a bed and breakfast. They're growing some perennial and fruits and annual vegetables. They have a small chicken flock and goat herd. Take a couple seconds or a couple minutes and pause the slideshow and jot down a couple options that this farm has for marketing. And then when you're ready, go ahead and continue to some solutions for case study number two. Okay, one option that these guys have is an on-farm dinner. I think this is becoming a, um, a very successful adventure. Maybe team up with a local brewery or winery and pair some food and, and uh, drinks together. The old pumpkin patch corn maze. The school tours as more and more children get farther and farther away from the farm schools are willing to pay a few dollars a person to have the students come out uh, to the tour for a farm. I also think selling eggs and goat meat is an area that has a growing demand and maybe a festival in the fall. Get a bluegrass band and, and have a fall festival where you're highlighting some of the fall decorations and a scarecrow contest and those kind of things. So lots of opportunity for a case to study number two as well. Case study number three. Well these guys are a little further off the beaten path. They're very rural and they really don't want anyone to visit their farm. 
having somebody come to their farm has no appeal whatsoever. A large vegetable garden, and they're doing beef on pasture, but a, but they have a pretty small herd due to limited uh, farm size. Again, um, pause the slideshow and jot down a couple options that that case study of farm number three might have to offer. In my opinion, the grass-fed beef is is obviously a good market for them, and I think they need to be selling that at a small a small amount, either quarters or 30, 40 pound bundles of beef, and try to hit a large uh, number of consumers because if their product is better and healthier than what's being sold at the store, they need to receive a premium. The farmer's market, a good option for this farm, and they could b both sell vegetables and meat at the farm. And again, they could work with local restaurants and and provide them with some products as well as a CSA opportunity where they make the deliveries when the farm and the people aren't necessarily on their farm. So hopefully you had some of those good ideas as well. So as we talk about some farms, you just need to be continuing to evaluate your resources and looking at the options you might have. Case study number four. A small farm with five acres available for production two miles from a successful small winery not interested in dealing with the public what are the options that this farm might have so pause your slideshow again look at a couple things that this farm might be able to do my solution grow crops for the winery grapes rhubarb berries um, I talked to one individual farmer and he has all of his crops sold to one winery that's just down the road. So he's developed his market. He's going to receive a wholesale price, but it's close, it's easy, it's convenient, and only has to deal with one customer.